Welcome to this latest video and podcast from Union Solidarity International. Today I'm in Durham in the Red Hills building with Davy Hopper who is the General Secretary of the National Union of Mine Workers in the North East. Welcome and we're pleased to have you Davy. Good afternoon. We're here today to talk about the dispute that is happening in Spain at the moment and Davy's just recently visited there. But first and foremost, I think it's I think it's very important, Davy, that we actually touch on the parallels between what happened to your union in the 1980s, 85, 86, with the, the decimation, the ideological attack on the mining industry, who traditionally the mine workers have always been in the vanguard of the labour movement and the working class. And there's a lot of parallels going on between what happened in the 1980s and obviously Spain in particular today. David, would you want to just give us a few reflections of your experiences during the 1980s? Because I think that would be helpful as we talk about Spain today. <coughs> yeah, yeah. The, uh, the 1984-5 miners dispute was probably certainly one of the most prolonged disputes uh, in British Labour history. Uh, it was a dispute almost unparalleled in that it wasn't about wages or conditions, it was only about uh, the right to work. Uh, Thatcher, I believe, and the, the Tory government were determined to smash the coal industry, uh, not really to make us self-dependent on foreign coal and foreign energy, but to get rid of the Miners Association, the National Union of Mine Workers, which at that time was uh, left-wing led and was involved in many, many other disputes uh, in support of other workers in struggle. And as you mentioned, the uh, miners throughout the world have been in the vanguard of our movement. They've been the main protagonists in all struggles uh, and obviously with a socialist belief in many, many areas uh, where the National Union of Mine Workers is involved. It was a bit of a threat and it was certainly a major threat uh, to Thatcher's philosophy on the free market economy, which really was workers working for very, very little wages uh, and profits running amok. To do that, uh, she destroyed our communities and our villages and anyone can witness that the day of the destitution in their villages the lack of hope, the lack of inspiration, and more importantly, the lack of jobs in these communities. Some of our mining communities in Durham have male unemployment way, way above 60%. And of course, young people leave our communities in our communities now where no jobs come in after the dispute. Uh, a really a sad sight when you look back and I remember what them communities were and what the community stood for. On the recent visit to Spain, I picked up indications, very strong indications, of a similar situation. Because the Spanish coal fields are situated in northern Spain, in Asturias and Leon and Aragon. And these communities are once again, like our own, self-reliant on one industry, and that is the mining industry of Spain does have diversification. Durham only had coal mines. Uh, they do have mineral mines. In fact, they do have one gold mine in Spain. But the whole of the industry has been cut back, I think, close on 70% in grants to sustain that particular industry. And it doesn't need an economic genius to work out what a 70% cutback means in these particular areas. The miners themselves seem very determined to resist and indeed embark on a dispute, a strike dispute, uh, which looked as though it was uh, certainly probably going to make the government think again, uh, but that didn't happen uh, and they went back to work. I think they're looking at alternative tactics in uh, the coal fields. I had the opportunity to speak to the miners concerned, a delegate from every pit, 
in his studios, attended the meeting I attended, uh, and I tried to outlay the parallels of the British miners' strike and tell them what had happened uh, after to us after not being successful in our dispute. Uh, they seemed to be shocked that we were on strike for 12 months and went back without any agreement. The point I picked up mainly uh, in Spain was that the miners at this point have public support. That public support, in my opinion, is vital because during the British miners dispute, we didn't have, we never had public support. We had pockets of public support. We didn't get support from the TUC, in my opinion, which was a major factor in us not being able to sustain the dispute longer or indeed force the government into a decision that wouldn't have closed the, the, the number of pits that they did. The British Labour Party also was found to be wanting under Neil Kinnock, although we did get some great rank and file support, uh, as was the case with certain trade unions. But the miners in Spain are facing a very, very similar future uh, as what we uh, had to sustain. There's very, very little alternative work, probably a, a little bit farming. But once them pits close in that particular region, that region will be decimated. Youngsters will leave the area uh, and there will be really the death of uh, all coal mining uh, or mining industry in, in northern Spain. It's very, very sad when you feel that, that the uh, behest of the government, the financial crisis in, Euro in Europe has been caused by capitalism. Bank is speculating as though they were booties runners and now it's come to the crunch in most of the countries in Europe, the people who are having to pay the price are ordinary workers. So it's imperative that support is given to sustain this dispute if it takes other forms again. And the British miners have already set up and established a fund in solidarity with our brothers in Spain and that can be contributed to. At the moment, we are not doing anything because of the fact that there's no action on. But once, once action is restarted, I'm assured that uh, it will be. Uh, we will then see the fund come into, into full play and hopefully help and sustain what is a much needed victory for the Spanish workers. It's a case of fighting on all fronts. It's a case that the British miners fully understand. It's a case that all workers should really understand because when you look back after 1984, 85 in Britain, nearly every section of workers who was embarked on a dispute against the employers and indeed the government uh, have been beaten. And they've been beaten uh, because of what happened to the miners in 1984-5. So there's lessons to be learned in Britain, in Spain and indeed around the world for workers. Internationalism is vitally important. It's vitally important because what happens in one country one day probably happens again very shortly after in another country. So we would urge our workers to try and support this campaign and support our workers in struggle. Uh, so in the past, and certainly in the 1930s, when many Durham miners went to fight fascism in Spain, the Asturian miners fought fascism from the forefront in Spain and lost 2,000 people in the struggle which Frank were killed after the uh, after the war. So we've got a history of internationalism and it's the same fight in Spain as it was in Britain and could be in any other country. So we urge people to take cognizance, look at the arguments, look at the problem that's there and see what will happen to not only the Spanish miners, other workers in Spain if their struggle isn't successful. There was a massive demonstration the day before we left in Madrid uh, where violence was at the top of the agenda. It wasn't the violence of workers, it was the violence of the civil guard uh, and the police. So it's a vital struggle and if you can't support we would urge you to support because it could be your turn next. Thanks for that very detailed and comprehensive response, Davey, in terms of the, the parallels between 
the mid eighties in Britain and what is going on in Spain today. And the, and the parallels just couldn't be any clearer. We see a region regions stroke nations in Spain and the Basque country in particular who let's just say are historically the best friends of the right wing within Spain. And that was the same in the North East and in Yorkshire and other areas of England in particular, where there was an ideological attack by a right wing government against traditionally areas where those right wing parties didn't have a lot of political support from the ordinary people and communities. In your travels in Spain, David, what was the thing that struck you the most? The, the, sp the spirits of the workers and the communities? Did, but there's, looking back in the mid 80s, could you feel that there was genuinely more support from the ordinary person in the street than perhaps you had during the 80s? At the moment, I think the support in Spain, uh, public support, is very, very high. Every demonstration which was attended, obviously in Oviedo, where we were, uh, was supported by many, many public sector workers including national health service workers and civil servants uh, and people in general seem to be fully behind uh, the struggle. We were never fortunate enough to have that and I still think that that is the key. Mm -hmm. If these workers carry other workers with them in the way that they've got them at the moment, uh, I think it will help them all the more make success more easier. But you've got to always be aware of the power of the press, the power of the media, and of course, once you start turning people's minds, the miners will find it much more difficult. But I think, at the moment, anyhow, most of the people we spoke to, and most of the people who were on the demonstrations, were fully aware of how vital it is not to lose this particular dispute. Mm -hmm. I think we couldn't agree more with that, because when you look at the the statistics of what's actually happening in Spain at the moment, where we have over 50% of young people unemployed, and that really is a massaging of the figures because of the people who work part-time, the seasonal work, and unemployment's over 25%. I think the context is completely different, where people realise what's happening to the mine workers in Spain is happening to all workers across, the, across Spain. The attack on collective bargaining rights in terms of trade union rights in general and the levels of pay are being decimated across the board so you know all the stories and press coverage that comes through from Spain you're absolutely right people seem to be clearly and succinctly aware that the, the battle of the mine workers is the battle of all workers in Spain at the moment I think we were really delighted and you know quite surprised to hear the great financial support that is coming from the mine workers in the UK and beyond to support the workers in Spain and you were informing us that over £25,000 or just round about there has been raised to help support the workers in struggle. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about some of the campaign work and the raising awareness that you've been involved in? Yeah, we uh, well firstly at the outset of the problems, uh, one or two former miners and uh, in this coal field, uh, approached the officers to see if anything was being done uh, to support the Spanish miners. At, the, at that t point in time, the strike was in its early days yeah. and we hadn't uh, started, but we sent two people across to Spain to uh, investigate and examine uh, the problem and what was happening. The report we got back was, it was a long, hard struggle uh, and finance would be desperately needed. We thereupon uh, set up the Miners International Solidarity Campaign in Spain, or for Spain, uh, and that was set up within a matter of days. A lot of campaigning was done. We had meetings in the northeast uh, around the big towns, uh, Middlesbrough, Sunderland, Newcastle. Uh, we also uh, spoke to other trade unions, and we had uh, two miners speak at the Durham Miners Gala uh, on July the 14th. Uh, outlining their problems and their struggle and we had arrangements in hand for two miners to come across one into the northeast and one into Merseyside uh, to get around factories and workplaces 
uh, and spread the message. We feel that this dispute is vital. It might be a distance away from us, but it's very, very important for all workers, in our opinion, that support is given to this struggle because the domino effect will come in if the Spanish miners are picked off, the rest of Spain's wages will be forced down in a, a climate where there's mass unemployment now. That will probably move Portugal's up in arms as we hear on the news this morning. Greece is having tremendous financial problems uh, and all of Europe could possibly collapse in a, in a similar situation with a domino effect. These must be stopped, the cuts must be stopped uh, in the tracks uh, and the only way to do that is work as banding together in, in solidarity and one man's fight is everyone's fight. Absolutely Davy. and we know that the, the attack on Spanish workers is an attack on the working class and the same attack on the working class has been played out across Europe and beyond because it's the same game that's been played a neoliberal, a deregulation agenda that wants to have nothing to do with trade unionism and wants to smash it. And it's very important that we hear the struggle of the, the Spanish miners and how we can join the dots in different countries across the world and how workers are facing the same fight. And we see our role in Union Solidarity International is to act as a focal point for helping to coordinate and help raise awareness of the struggles that are happening in different corners of the globe and how it's relevant to all of us. David, I would just like to conclude by just speaking about the fantastic building that we're in at the moment, Red Hills, and you were just informing us that the assembly hall upstairs had, I, I think, 291 tables and chairs, 296 seats, 296 seats, yeah. seats uh, which re represented Every all the pits. Do you want to building. tell us a little bit more just about the history of this fantastic building? Well, the building was uh, commissioned in 1913, uh, completed in 1915 uh, from the old offices uh, in North Road, Durham. And we maintain it's the finest trade union building in the world, purpose built. The uh, debating chamber where 296 delegates can sit each one numbered as to his pit. Uh, so the room we're sitting in now, the executive committee room, uh, it was a, well, it was the place where the delegates from our pits met once every two weeks, and uh, that business would be passed on to the debating chamber in the big hall once every month, where every delegate uh, was representing the pit. It was a uh, total democracy. Uh, mm -hmm. or should have been total democracy in, in them days. And it's maintained, it's been maintained in very, very good nick. Uh, unfortunately, at the closure of the mines, we thought we would have lost the building. Uh, we haven't done that. In fact, we've uh, brought other tenants in of a sympathetic nature. Uh, we've kept our heads above uh, water and we're open at the end of the day uh, when the building is no longer needed for trade union purposes for miners. Uh, with the mayor of the history and heritage society uh, because we have a fantastic uh, set of records right from the inception of the union in 1869 uh, it was built on the backs of miners miners paid every penny for the building and I think we owe it to the generations gone to leave a legacy for future generations to see the struggle uh, the toil, the internationalism that miners were involved in. We've got banners in these offices from the Soviet miners, uh, from the German miners, uh, Australian miners, you name it. We've had international connections all of our lives. And uh, one thing I will say, which I was very proud to do when we went to Spain, uh, we took the banner of the Chopman Miners Lodge, which bears the portraits of Marx and Lenin, International Workers of the World to Unite, uh, and that was the lodge of Stephen Lather, the brother of Sir Will Lather, the first president of the NUM in, when it was formed in 1947. And he was killed at the Battle of Jerama in Spain uh, in the Civil War. So it was a pleasure and a privilege really to take the banner from so far away of a comrade who fought 
fighting for against fascism in Spain uh, and that gave me personally a great deal of pleasure and I'm sure it gave the people of Chopwell whose banner we bought it to take over there uh, pleasure that after all these years the Chopwell banner went to Spain uh, to honour a comrade who fought dying for the fight fascism. Dave, I think that's a very a very fitting way to end this conversation with yourself today. I think we will do all we can, as we have been doing, to publicise and raise awareness about the, the struggle that our brothers and sisters and their families are presently facing in the mine industry in Spain, but the working class in general. And with this webcast and iTunes download, we will be distributing as much information about how you can get involved and in helping to show your solidarity in any way possible, including financial. It's a privilege to have been in Durham today in this fantastic building, the, the heartland of the working class, not only in England, but a symbol of the working class across the world. And it just leaves me to thank you, Davey, for your time with Union Solidarity International today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.